The official 9-11 narrative is that brown people are geniuses now who coordinated the most sophisticated terror campaign ever before seen that bypassed the world's biggest defense budget and then was never able to even remotely replicate anything like it again. Honestly, I'm just impressed that people from the Hidden Sand Village could fly airplanes at all, let alone Steph Curry half-court no-scope them into three really important buildings with perfect aim. That is a 9-11 miracle, and it turns out there's a lot of miracle work going on with 9-11. So let's first start with God's chosen miracle, the d one. A month and a half before 9-11, this guy becomes the new owner of the Twin Towers after signing a 99-year lease for $3.2 billion. You might be thinking to yourself, wow, this guy looks very honest and trustworthy. His name is Larry Silverstein. You, you can't make this up. Larry did what any responsible would do after buying anything. He finagled a never before seen insurance policy that covered the towers for double their value. His policy request was so fucking retarded that the broker had to bring together 25 different insurance lenders to give him what he asked for, making him one of the first people in American history to get terrorism insurance on a commercial building. And as we know, days later, Kamar and Pajit Allahu Aliyup slam dunk two planes into the towers, reducing Larry's multi-billion dollar investment into a pile of rubble and the biggest insurance insurance payout in the history of the world. Sadly, Larry couldn't make it to work on 9-11 and unfortunately is still alive to this day. Roaming the earth, waiting for Satan to reclaim his soul back to the underworld. But trust me, it's not just rich that God blesses miracles with. The government gets its fair share as well. September 10th, the day before 9-11, retards at the Pentagon announced 2.7 trillion dollars in missing funds only to have a tuscan raider park a boeing 757 directly in their accounting department the next day 32 minutes after the second tower was hit 225 miles away three buildings hit in less than an hour now that's a 9-11 miracle baby building seven the twin towers cute little lolly sister located 1600 feet away from the impact site quietly fell straight into the ground seven hours after the twin towers the news and the people that run it blamed a small office fire but every single structural engineer ever calls that impossible that's what the physics shows saying it was a controlled demolition a perfect controlled demolition of an intact building it is too bad engineers don't believe in miracles total miracle death now i still have some questions and they're questions that miracles can't quite answer why did leslie robertson lead engineer for the twin towers say that she literally designed them to withstand the impact of a boeing 707 airplane until 9 11 no steel structure in history has ever collapsed due to a fire so how the f did it happen three times in a row in one day? Why did hundreds of survivors report explosions? There was a uh, heavy-duty explosion inside the lobby. There was this big explosion. Continuous explosions. Floor by floor. Yeah, so they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, boom, boom. Why did three of the plane hijackers have a U.S. Naval Air Station military base as their primary address of residence on their driver's license? Why did NIST admit they deliberately avoided searching for explosive residues in their official investigation? Why did a dozen independent researchers find thermite and explosive materials at ground zero. Why is it okay for this to do whiteface? But when I do blackface, it becomes this huge problem all of a sudden. Who is E-Team and why were they a group of Israeli artists living in the towers with unrestricted access leading up to 9-11? Speaking of which, who are the dancing Israelis and why were they jailed and deported for filming and celebrating the towers collapsing? Here were revealed as Mossad assets who were arrested after cheering and high-fiving and videotaping uh, the crash of the airplanes into the World Trade Towers. Why did thousands of the world's top engineers and architects form an entire organization to challenge the official 9-11 lies and and narrative and what I had the pleasure of working pretty much with every Prime Minister of Israel from Yitzhak Shamir forward I said to myself wouldn't it be fantastic if I could own the Twin Towers. We got very, very lucky. The governor of New York, George Pataki, decided one day that maybe it would be good to privatize the ownership of the World Trade Center. So I got a call from the governor's office and they said, would you? ever consider owning the World Trade Center. It 
was very, very good for the family, very good for, for us, and we were very, very fortunate. On the morning of 9-11, I'm getting ready, getting dressed to go to the dermatologist. I have light colored hair, light skin. The sun is a disaster for me. I can't take the sun. She said, okay, but you're going to the dermatologist. You're going this morning and you're not going downtown. Hmm. We got very, very lucky. And I had an obligation to collect the insurance proceeds from the policies. A new governor was just elected, Elliot Spitzer, an old friend who I knew well. And I said, Elliot, if you don't help me, I'll never collect from the insurance companies. And guess what? He listened and he said, you know what? You're entitled. I'm going to get you the money. And in six months, he got me the four and a half billion dollars. We got very, very lucky.